Aladdin for Super Nintendo was one of my favorite games as a kid. Unfortunately, I was too bad at video games to ever finish it. So, to avenge my childhood, I hacked this game to get infinite lives so I never lose, unlimited apples to throw at the bad guys, skipped to the final stage to defeat Jafar, and finally beat the game. Now, this channel is about programming and software security, so you're probably wondering why I'm even making this video. Well, there's actually a ton of overlap between software security and game hacking. To hack games, you need to do a little bit of reverse engineering to figure out how the game works, spot potential vulnerabilities, and then make in-memory patches to the game to do your evil cheating. This is exactly how we started and gave Aladdin 99 apples. When the game starts, you start with 10 apples. The developers at Capcom probably used a variable somewhere to store the current amount of apples, so in theory, all we have to do is search for the number 10 in the game's memory, change it to 99, and boom, 99 apples. But there's a problem. The Super Nintendo has a 24-bit addressable memory space, meaning that when I search for the number 10 in memory, I find a lot of 10s. And there's no way I can go through and edit all these 10s to guess which one is correct, and if I edit some of them, they may break the game. But then I realized, when I throw an apple, the number of the variable decreases by one. So what if I can find an address whose value is 9 now, but whose value used to be 10? And sure enough, we find two addresses that have this property. And when I change this value, boom, we get more apples. Infinite apple hack unlocked. <laughs> I beat level one with my infinite apple hack. And at the end of the level, the game gave me a passcode. That's when I realized I totally forgot about a major part of this game. Games in the 90s didn't have a lot of room for space to save the game, so instead, they would give you a passcode at the end of a level that you could use to skip to where you left off. So if we could figure out how to break the passcode screen, we could teleport to the last level of the game, beat Jafar, and my father would finally be proud of me. The passcode screen was pretty straightforward. Use the left and right buttons to move the cursor and the up and down buttons to select a character. Press start, and if you put in the right passcode, you would teleport to that level. Now, to break this, I figured there was logic in the game that checked against a list of good passwords, and if your password matched a good password in that list, you went to the associated level. But the question was, what did a password look like in the game's memory? To solve this, we took the infinite apple hack approach. My thoughts were that with the cursor on the left side of the screen, the index for the cursor variable was either zero or three, assuming zero indexing. And then when I moved it one to the right, the cursor index would become either one or two. Using the basic process of elimination, I found the address that directly corresponded to the position of my cursor. And sure enough, when I changed the characters in the passcode field, the variables in the other addresses adjacent to the cursor changed too. The four bytes immediately after were the reverse order of the password on the screen. Here I learned the characters and the passcode screen had the following values. Aladdin was zero, Jasmine was one, Genie is two, Abu is three, Sultan is four, and Yaffa! is five. Now again, do not forget why we're here. We must defeat Jafar so I can finally sleep at night. When I beat level one, I was given this passcode. The passcode is Genie Abu Aladdin Sultan, which when I put it into the game, it corresponds in memory to the passcode 2304, which is my passcode in reverse in memory. Now, if my logic before was correct, there is a table of passwords in memory that has all of the correct passwords, and we can use the last password in that list to teleport to the end of the game and finally defeat Jafar forever. Now, searching for the string 4032 in memory, we found something very promising. A long list of values, starting with our magic string, the first password, whose values all did not go over five. By not going over five, it ensured that it is most likely a list of passwords that correspond to the characters in the game. And at the end of this list, there it was, what may just be the passcode to the final level 4310. Now, based on what we found before about the characters, this passcode corresponds to Aladdin, Jasmine, Abu, Sultan. Now, what I could do is put the characters into the passcode screen like you're supposed to, but that would be boring. This is a hacking video. So instead, I decided to inject the values into the passcode screen using the memory editor directly. Press enter. I should get teleported to the final level. Hold on. Let's go. 
Yes! All right, got it. God, it feels so fucking good to win. Oh my God, I gotta pee again. I'll be right back. But then I realized I hadn't even solved the hard problem yet. Again, the whole point of this video is that I am really bad at video games. I mean, really bad. Like even just getting the footage for this video when I killed Jafar, I died like three times. Like literally I have the footage of me dying to this boss over and over and over again. After wasting literally an hour trying to defeat Jafar by myself, I had to take a step back and look at the drawing board. I was messing around with the hearts value in the game to figure out if there's a way to give myself infinite hearts. And I couldn't figure out how to set the value above the 10 that you were allowed without breaking the game. I also experimented with setting the value to zero to try to kill Aladdin to see if that affected the logic at all. You're probably thinking that setting the value to zero is going to kill me, but actually something much more interesting happens instead. When I set the heart value to zero, the game subtracted one when I hit an enemy and created what is known as an integer underflow. Because the value was zero in memory and I subtracted one from it, it wrapped around all the way to the max value of a byte and gave me 255 hearts. Now, while this did break the rendering of the game, I was finally prepared to return to Jafar and beat him for the last time. It's time to end this once and for all. We go to the password screen. Let's look for our password in memory. Password in memory, put in four, three, one, zero. Boom, hit the enter key, final level, here we come. Now we need to inject the infinite life hack by setting our lives equal to zero so that it wraps around and gives us infinite lives. We're gonna set our hearts equal to all zero. The logic will flip that around. So now we have zero hearts left. You son of a bitch. It's been 30 years, 30 years. Well, 20, 25-ish, let's do it. See, we got hit, but now we have 255 hearts. Easy, easy. One hit. Three hits. The jump. Oh, God. Oof. Jesus. Hit him again. Four hits. Five hits. One more has got to be it, right? Oh, dude. How many lives do you have? Jesus. Come on. <gasps> Let's go. That's what I thought, man. 25 years later, I finally beat your ass. Only had to completely hack this game to do it, but, you know, all's well that ends well. Something, something. All's fair in Love of War. All that good shit. With this out of the way and Genie's freedom secured, there was only one thing left to do. Wow, this is awesome. Thanks, Aladdin. Thanks, Jasmine. Genie, is that you? You guys should go watch another video where I hack a different video game.